Okay, I'll continue to work up along this edge with some darker darks and these same dark darks are going to be up in here in a minute but I want to identify this little rim right up across the top there and um, get those values situated a little bit before I move on and let's get a little bit of the a little bit of orange in there as well by picking up some some yellow with this and I had to clean my palette here pretty quick but let's just get in a few of these shapes along the front where we see this kind of a stronger orange and we see some strata that moves along in there so I'm just gonna create uh, some random shapes and then I will come back in and identify those a little better in a minute but Let's just, again, soften some of these edges, always towards the, um, we're gonna, the, if we're gonna soften an edge, it, ne it needs to be on the side towards the, the sunlight. Okay, we'll need darker darks in here. I won't worry about that too much right now. It's gonna help to shape these uh, form shadows in the this area on this cliff but I will just get a few of those in so we can see where we're at and work our way down here to this area where we come down across the front okay now now we've got this uh, this cliff in the right value range that's working its way down into here once again soften Soften, soften, and we can come back in and work a lot more on this later. But right now we're just going to start to get this laid in a little bit so that we can define some of these shapes down in the middle. As this, Once this is dry, I'll come back in and try to identify right here along this edge and uh, darken that up. But I don't want to get it too dark back here till I see how dark these are going to be up here. Because if things are off in the distance, even the darks are going to be lighter there than they are here. Now it doesn't look that way in the photograph, as you can see, because uh, the photographs lie to us. You know, the photograph does not do the same thing that our eye does. It does not have the capacity to deal with that latitude of light and dark. The lights become too light in a photograph and the darks become too dark. So we've got to, knowing that, we need to kind of adjust things a little bit. Now as we continue on with this, I'm going to lay in some dark darks up here for this tree. And that will help us to evaluate wh where we need to go with our darks as we move further back in space here. And but I'm going to mix a combination. For my dark, I'm going to use this thalo blue 
that I mentioned at the start. Look how strong that is. Well, you got to be real careful with thalo. Um, but I like to use that along with some quinacridone gold, which turns it into a, a much more palatable green. And then I like to keep my quinacridone sienna nearby as well. And that's going to really um, dull back my sap green, which is this right here. So I, look at the difference in these colors. I'm going to use a variety up here. And I'm going to just start working my way down as quick as I can on these greens that are up here on this tree. Now, um, I've got to be a little bit careful on some of the edges as I work, but I'm really going to try to move quickly here uh, using uh, the, the technique that I, I use, which is to, to kind of move my brush quickly in smaller strokes as opposed to just big broad strokes that you you see quite frequently uh, with watercolor i like to have a lot of smaller strokes working their way in there and because it's pines i'm gonna leave this outside edge kind of raggedy um, to give that to give that feeling but mainly what i want is variety so now i'll pick up a little bit greener green down in here Come right across that trunk, come over here, and you'll see very quickly as I start to work this, um, you'll see very quickly that it, that it appears like a pine tree silhouetted in there. Because we're dealing with that silhouette shape, that's the most important thing. And I'll continue to work down. Now let me get some more reds on this side and come in here because I want to keep that variety of color going. Occasionally, I'll come in with a, a branch or two that connects up with this foliage in terms of a silhouette. But I have got time for that later. Right now, I want to just get this in here. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre, touch that with my um, sap green. And now I'm going to get a little bit lighter down in this area. Now this won't be the only color we put on here. We can certainly come back in um, as we start to, to work our, our uh, detail uh, much further along on the end we can come back in there but for now um, we're going to put this in and try to get this silhouette now this is one of those unique times where we're instead of using negative painting dark to reveal the light because it's darker than anything else underneath it we can actually paint in a positive way which is to paint the dark over the light. But even still, I'm going to leave a few places in here where there's going to be just uh, some branches that might break through. And I'm going to not go over this right here because I'm going to have that be more of a red uh, on that trunk right there. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But I'm going to leave a few little highlights here and there And again, the, the, the trick here is to, is to keep a variety. It's dark, but let's keep a variety of color going through here. Okay. Pick up my thalo, strong thalo. I'll put this down, but I'll drop some pigment into it to blend with it. And this is going to cut across the front. Come in here now.
This is going to come clear out and cut across the front of this cliff in the background. Okay, now I'm going to leave a few places where there are some branches in here. And just keep working. Just keep working my way down through here. But uh, you can see that that pine tree takes shape. You see it has the feel of a pine tree and the, uh, the look and feel that we're, that we're trying to achieve here. Then the other side. Now I'm going to leave a place right down in here where I'm going to build some, some uh, uh, positive shapes. But I'm going to actually build those uh, with some different colors after this is dry. So I'm just going to let that area alone. Keep working my way down. I'm going to leave these negative shapes right here. So we have some positive and some negative shapes, even down down here on this trunk. But uh, the the positive shapes are interesting. But the negative shapes, when we get these light shapes against the dark, boy, that's really powerful because that's what we see in nature. We really find those darks in nature. Okay, right down here, I'm gonna bring some yellow across here, let the pigments blend a little bit. And let that cross over the trunk. And then I'll go with my greener sap green down into here as we come out on this side. Okay, now that's pretty quick to shape this pine tree, but look at the variety we have in here. We have quite a bit of different colors going on in there, and we want it that way. We want that variety. We want to, to know that uh, it's not just this flat piece of construction paper cut out and pasted on there, that uh, it's a living thing with a variety of color and if you think the trees are green you just go down and take a closer look because they're not there's all kinds of good stuff going on and uh, and once we take a close look we'll see we'll see those okay so here comes my tree shape and then I'm going to bring just a little bit more greens into this tree down in here, shape it slightly, and let these colors kind of all blend together down in here. This is an area that's going to be quite dark. And so I'll just bring some greens into there right now that are going to help to move it back into that value range. Now here on this edge, it's going to be an area where dark meets dark. So I'm going to have some soft, softer edges where it comes out on this side and even right back here too. Okay, and as one final thing, I'm going to bring some, some uh, blues down into this area. And I'll use a ultramarine, which is kind of a sky blue. And... I'll mix that with plenty of water and put just a little tone on this. This is all dry around it so I can just come up here and just work my way past and up through these other dark areas. Since it's dry I'll just lay some color in here and down into here and then pick up some blues 
along with a little tiny bit some variety down in here. It's white, but it's not pure white. It's not pure white. So now we've got our whole painting starting to work together. We'll continue to build up these values and start to bring this up, working piece by piece by piece. Once we get uh, every, the darks established up in here, then we can move back and and carefully identify the darks back there on that cliff. But we need to, to do it all uh, in relation to each other. Uh, each color doesn't exist by itself on a, on a white surface. This color right here and this color adjacent to each other affect each other. Okay, this green right here, if it were sitting out against pure white, it's, uh, well, let's just see how it looks against pure white. Look how strong that green looks. But, put it against these other tones right in here and it, it drops back just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to kind of finish things up on this painting. Uh, we've, we've got a lot done on it and uh, it looks pretty good right now, but there's a lot of areas that, that we need some work on. So we're gonna carry these things through now and I'm gonna maybe time lapse it a little bit to speed things up. This is the process that uh, we use in all watercolors where we're adding the darks and these darks finish things up a little bit. So I'm gonna to turn to this area right here, which is this cliff. And we're gonna start with that. The light is coming from this side, which means this side of this uh, cliff is, is all lighted up. And this side is not getting any direct light. That means um, this is our lighted side, this is our form shadow, and the two where areas where, the area where the two come together right here is uh, generally called a, um, a half tone area where we go from light to dark. And this is where we see most of the detail. So I'm gonna work on a little detail here, uh, darken this up just slightly to re reflect that form shadow side, keeping it warm. And then I'll kind of work over, finish this tree and come on down. So let's get busy doing that. And, uh, and follow along as, as I get to work on this. Right up in here, in this area, now I'm going to mix up a little bit of, uh, it's going to be uh, yellow, but a little bit warmer yellow. Um, this is yellow ochre. I'll pick up just a little bit of cadmium red, the two together. Will, will give me my orange. But I'm also going to want to have some of this quinacridone coral uh, in some places back here on this side. And of course, I'll need some, uh, some purples in there. So I'll use my ultramarine blue over on this side and some of this, some of this quinacridone coral here, which it makes kind of a purple. So those are the, the reds and some of these darks that I'm, I'm going to use over on this side. Now right where it turns here, I'm going to be, I want it to go darker than it is. And since it dries lighter, I'm going to start a little bit darker than I'm going to want the finished piece to be. And I'll just pull this, this bead down a little bit. And then I'll identify this area right here where it turns. Right in there, I'm gonna be very careful as I start this turning process. And I've got to be able to return to this and soften it in just a second. as I get this, this bead of, of wet paint working, working its way down. And 
And then I have to be prepared to jump back in here in just a second and grab some of these, these areas and soften them. I'm use a little bit smaller brush here and load it with water and then I'm going to soften these edges mostly on the side facing the light and it's going to make it look much more natural than if I just left those hard lines that way. Okay, I'll come up and catch this one right here. And this one. Grab some of these yellows, connect them with some of these other shapes and let these these colors just kind of join together here. I'll do this little stair step turn here as it goes up and comes across and make sure I've softened these outside edges. Pick up a little bit of detail in here. Yeah, I like that. It's that has a good feeling to it. And I want to keep these darks here and let it be a little lighter as it moves back away from it. It's still going to need to be warm, but let's let's separate some of these shapes. Okay. I like how that's looking. I'll have to put one more glaze over the top as we come back into it in just a little while, but right now this looks like it's going to work just fine. Clean up a couple of these edges, and yeah, that has a lot better feel to it now where it turns to the right value range. Now let's come down this way and pick up the same thing on uh, some of these rocks right down here. We want to be quite warm when it turns, but since we've already got a glaze on there, we don't need too dark of a dark to, uh, to move that into that darker range. And then I'm going to leave a little, a few little shapes here when the, where these trees and branches come up. And uh, a little negative painting right down in here. Okay, soften some of these lines right here. And uh, that's coming along nicely too, right in there. Okay, now I'm going to move over here start to work my way down this this tree over on this side and this is going to be my shadow area down into here on this part of the trunk all right a little bit of shadow up in there darken this side once again and let's get the same thing going down here a nice nice dark shadow area and then the red over on this side slightly good now let's just darken up some of these tones that get out here towards the edge we still see them but they don't we don't want them to stick out too strongly all right, now let's come up here, pick up a smaller, a smaller brush, and now I'm going to come up and get some of the detail work up in this area. I'm going to pull this down slightly so you can see a little better in this area. But there is going to be some positive shapes as well that I'm going to bring in here. And these are the branches as they stick out in between. Um, where these clumps of foliage are and we need a few of those in here not a ton of them uh, but we need a few as we work our way out towards the edge 
and then I'm going to darken in just a few places and then I'll come over here and pick up this side finish off just a few of these to make it look a little more real okay I'll shape this I'll just continue to work my my darks and lights down through here to make it look a little more real this is the part that's just kind of abstract painting really saying where do I need the darks and where do I need the lights and just kind of keep working that direction I want these these clumps of foliage to feel like they go around so I don't want them just to look like they've been cut out of construction paper I want them to be uh, to have some areas in front areas behind a little bit of detail as one or another of them comes out in front of the other ones as I'm doing right here and uh, just kind of keep track of all that as I go work our way down now you watch me as I, I do my brush strokes um, I use a lot of smaller brush strokes as I'm working on my paintings I don't use a lot of big bold things I like to use a, a little bit of a smaller brush and kind of uh, work my way in, in just a bunch of these raggedy little uh, short strokes and I think that's left over from my uh, years of, of illustration especially in pencil uh, where you almost all of your sketching is is done with a series of, of smaller strokes rather than just just big ones and I think that may be have carried over here I don't know but it's kind of the technique that I use I like to just keep my brush moving uh, continually and it, it it makes it appear as if I'm painting fast which I'm not I'm painting slow but because the the, the brush moves rather quickly the shapes start to show up and and um, it, it just gives that appearance but uh, it is kind of a slow process but and now you can see how I'm trying to make the, this foliage feel like it, it some of it goes back in space some of it comes out in front and I'm going to continue to bring this down in here into this area right here and keep my dark right up against this edge this would be the shadow side of it so that's where we're going to see our our darks pretty dark up in here so for some people this would be kind of tedious and, and sometimes it is for me too but uh, I kind of enjoy this part of it where you're bringing, uh, you're refining these shapes and and bringing things into focus is where it makes things seem so real. I'll continue this green that I'm using here. I'm going to build a few little branches that are with negative painting that are going to come down here and follow into this outside area here. And this is much closer than this is, so this will be darker than anything back there. I'm going to just leave a, a few of these little negative branches that are going to follow all the way out here to this edge. All right. Soften a few of these edges. Now, I'm trying to get it to feel like these uh, parts of the, the foliage are coming out towards us and if they did we'd see a little bit of a branch structure in there so I'll start to get some of that in there right now soften a few areas just kinda keep working on this to, to bring it into shape Okay, then we'll do the same thing uh, down into this area and bring some of these darks down. Uh, clear down into here. I need some of these powerful darks way back up underneath this foliage area in here. So I'm going to pick up quite a, 
a darkish red to pick up this right here to start balancing. A lot of green in here. I need some reds to, to uh, alter that feeling just a little here and there. This will help uh, once again to feel as if the light part of these uh, this foliage comes forward. And these darks that we're putting in now are really going to give it some power. It's really going to uh, make it feel like uh, there's some strength in here in terms of lights and darks. And right out here, like we have these darks out here, we're going to have some right out on this edge, which is going to tie into this dark right in this area. I am leaving a little bit of negative painting so that edge is broken up. Okay, now this is the outside perimeter of these uh, up front uh, pines right here. So we're going to see, since they're darker right here, we will see a little bit of branch structure, which will give some interest to this area back in here, which we need to have some more things going on in that. So we'll get some of that in there right now. I'm going to come pretty dark down here at the bottom. Pick up some stronger, we'll pick up some stronger reds down in here as well. And this is in this dirt area where that's shaping the snow. And bring that just a little bit darker, a little more powerful as it shapes this edge. Okay, need those darks right down in there. All right, now I've got this pretty much where I want it, this pretty much where I want it. As you look at it, notice that we've got darks here that we don't have over here. So I'm going to connect these darks by bringing them through this area right here. Keep these to where these are still a little lighter, but maybe some more blues in here so that we can uh, give the feeling that those are back in space. We don't want these to, to uh, come forward. We want them to recede. But let's get some nice, nice darks back under here in this area or underneath this tree. And See if we can't darken it up much the same way that we have up in here. So we feel some darks that are happening down in here. Now we don't have a lot of foliage, but we're going to still give the indication of uh, some sticks and structure as we build this with some harder, harder edges. And we're going to keep some of these others that we've got, uh, and um, some of them we're going to darken up, some of them we're going to make lighter than they are. but. We want the feeling that there's a bunch of sticks and twigs and, and um, branches and rocks and things down in here. So we'll just kind of build this up as we go and leave some of these marks down in here that are going to give that feeling. The main thing we're doing is getting some darks down in here. We need those darks. Okay. And we need that same weight that's here, down in here. So once again, it's very, um, it, it very much like abstract painting. We're just saying, what does it need? What does it feel like? How do I balance these lights and darks? And uh, that's more um, important now than, than making individual branches and twigs, because it's the value that the, our, our eyes see in nature first. We, we don't really see detail. That's our intellectual brain that does that. What we see is um, shapes, and we see shapes of light and dark. Okay, now we're getting a little warmer out in here, so I will I still want it dark, but not quite this light. So we want the contrast with the snow. So this now 
is going to get darker, especially if it's an area where the shadow is going to come across. and fall across this foreground. So it comes across and falls up and over here. All right, so that's what we're gonna have. Let's connect a few of those shapes. And I'm gonna still darken up even the lighter parts of this. So we have some contrast with that snow. All right, now this feels like the shadow crosses over and comes over. Again, we might darken up those shadows as well. But right now, let's get these darks in here. Let's get them where they need to go. And make sure we're covered that way. There should be a feeling that these darks, the same darks that are here, or even darker, are going to come up here in the foreground. We're trying to create the feeling that the snow is piled up and it comes over the top uh, of the dirt underneath and that's why we're we're handling the shadows in this way so it makes the snow feels like it it felt like it's raised up a little bit I think we're getting that in there I'm gonna bring some more reds in here a little variety and then I'm gonna work some detail into this foreground. I'll keep it dark in the front but warm down in here. I'll keep it dark but warm. It's got to be darker than the snow for this to work, this value pattern that we've created. Uh, this this has got to be dark and this has got to be dark for us to see this snow. on refining this clean my palette out a little bit so I can move forward and have clean clean paint as we do it okay now we've got a pretty good feel for this already and we're moving forward it's very it's a very, it seems like it's a little bit of a slow process, and it kind of is the technique that I use. Build it up slowly, and then work from there. I am going to, um, I need this to be a little darker back up in here, just a little bit. Mainly, I need the blues, uh, so that if, if I do darken it up, I want the, the blues to be in there to make it feel like it's, it's uh, off in the distance. So as we come down into this area, then uh, I'll take some of these darks that we've already started up in there, and then just bring it with blue, come down and, and meet this area right down in here. Right now, this whole shape right here is kind of light across there. I'm gonna bring these darks down, but once again, using a uh, blue so it'll still feel like it's back behind and let the this particular tree back there come down and make a little more interesting shape uh, in this area I'm going to bring the blue all the way down all the way down here And so this clump of trees now has its own shape. And I'll bring these blues clear down into here. 
and let this tree kind of melt down into that area. So that puts this tree back behind, brings these forward uh, in a certain way, but not, you know, not a lot, but uh, just a little. And then I'll go ahead and finish off some of these shapes in here. I'll tone those back because they're further back in space. I'll leave these light because they're, they're up close, even closer than these are over here. So I'll leave those a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to bring some yellow ochre, touch that with this uh, ultramarine blue. And that's going to give me kind of a green. And I'm going to shape some of these branches that come up through here with this. And now I'll soften these edges up here. Let those just kind of bleed their way up into this red that's there. So our eye doesn't go to an edge out here. It finds these branch shapes that come down. Add some interest to it. And then we'll let those continually soften as we work our way this way right in here. into a really nice uh, range of lights and darks. We have some really powerful sparkly lights in here as well as some up in this area. A really nice area where this turns there. And this part in the middle, uh, we want this to just kind of be a little frame over on this side. I'll darken up the left side slightly. And we don't want too much light back in there. So that's just going to push its way back. Just a little bit of detail down here, especially along the bottom. Using blue so it makes it feels like, feel like it moves back. I'll use some blues right down here, right along this edge. Keep some negative shapes going. And I'll do the same thing down in here. Let it go from light up at the top to darker down along this rim. Right here where these join together. Leave a few places where there's some branch structure down there. this tree blend into that one back there. Now we think we've got this where we, we want it. I want a little bit darker and warmer right up at the bottom here. So I'm going to want it to appear like it kind of goes back under these trees back in there. So I need some some warms to do that. It's always warm back in under the tree areas, but I'll do this uh, cautiously so I don't get too much dark in there. And here and there as it goes up. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just let that go. Now some of these light areas, these light uh, trunks and so forth, I'm gonna come back in and push those back just a little bit so they don't stick out so much. We want them to feel like they're back there. Okay, that feels good. It feels like they're being pushed back. Way back in there. You feel like there's a lot of foliage in there because of these negative shapes, but you don't have to see all of the detail of them. Okay, we're getting pretty close now. I'll just, uh, what I call, diddle with it for a while. 
that is just touch up a little here and there, a few little darks, bring up some lights, uh, lift the little areas where it seems like I, I need some more lights, I can lift slightly. But the main thing I want to do is I want to balance everything. I just want to look at this and say, oh, it needs a little more up here and a little more up there. For instance, right now in this area, see how light these trees are that are, that are up in this area? Well, I want them to be light, but at the same time, we need them in the right value range for where they are. So I'll put a few little darks on this dark, the shadow side. And let this come down and join in this area right here. And have a few, a few larger shapes. And again, these would be on the, the shadow side because the light's pretty strong right there. So we're just going to include a few of those on here and a few along, along the front where it comes up, the foliage comes up over this little cliff right here in the foreground. We'll see some darks up here. And now I'll come back up here on these. and get just a little bit more uh, structure going on here. And I don't want to make them too detailed or too dark, but I want them to have some shape. So carefully adjust these. quite a few um, streaks that appears to be like varnish or something that comes back off of these other sides here and uh, we want a few of those lines to come down through doesn't take much for us to for us to, to show those those shapes and and uh, the lines of those as they come down through but we once again we'll do that kind of cautiously and get a few of these coming down through some of these are varnish shapes but uh, we don't need to put every one of them in that's there we just want to get the indication the viewer finishes all this for us. So we don't have to do every single little detail. The viewer uh, knows what's there and sees, them, sees certain things and says, oh, I see what kind of cliff that is. And, and the viewer kind of finishes that. I'm just as this snow goes back in space I'm leaving a little I'm turning them blue which looks appears as if they're receiving a shadow from something here and they're picking up the blue because of the blue of the sky and so as we our eye reads that they're white some of these shapes that I uh, turn into blue our eye reads that and it reads it as white because we're used to seeing shadows fall on certain things. We still want some of this sparkle in here, so we've got that. But we don't want too much light right back in this area because we're looking through those shrubs and we're seeing an area that's in shadow back there. So we just have to see what nature does and just kind of follow that along. and. 
and pay attention to it and, and learn from it if we can. Darkening up this blue a little bit just to make a, a tiny bit more contrast in the foreground there. I really want these shadows to read and right now they're just a little too light. So I'm going to go ahead and darken up some of these. Foreground shadows. And um, then soften them as they come back up against this this edge here. I want to see some specific shapes which we've got and I'll bring some of this blue out in here. Okay, I'm going to soften these edges out here let that kind of fade out so we have harder shapes up closer to the to the uh, things that are causing the shadows I'm just continuing these shadows that come to here up across this area because if the shadow is not going to just stop at this edge, it's going to crawl up here. And these edges uh, that we're seeing, um, or these shadows that we're seeing, I should say, uh, are, are really important to the scene, to tying everything together and making it uh, look real. When we get to this point on a, the, a painting now, um, we've got the darks and the lights in place. We've increased the contrast. Look at the difference between this painting and our original photograph that we started with. It not only has more color, but it also has better uh, contrast of lights and darks. So it has that sparkle that we get from, uh, from working in watercolor. It feels, feels like a watercolor. but these patches of, of dark and light and dark and light all through here, these are the things we see in nature. We see these little shapes and um, our eye picks those up more than they would pick up a dark over light like that branch up there. This little tangle of branches in there really pulls forward because of leaving those lights. We have to be so cautious about it. And then this cliff, notice how much detail we have on this edge, which makes it appear more real, and we don't have much going on back up in here. Well, that's always the way we see in nature. We're always going to see the, um, where the edge turns from light to dark. There's always going to be detail, and that's where we see, just where we've got the change between light and dark right here, or we see a little bit, bit of detail there. At any point where we see a change between light and dark, that's where we see the nature of the, of the thing, nature of the, the uh, shape in nature. So the edges tell us uh, the story. All of these, these edges, carefully crafted edges, are are very, very important to us. So we're just about done now. Uh, what I like to do is I like to um, uh, set it aside and look at it for a little bit, but uh, we're going to um, just set it aside now. I might come back with a few little detail uh, 
things here and there and I'm going to have a little bit of the stuff down here leaves or something like that down across the the uh, snow here and a little bit of detail in the foreground that's going to finish things off and then we'll be done once I lay this uh, trial mat on here it really starts to to shape things up a little bit and give us a feeling of where we're headed on this well this has been a lot of fun to have you sit with me through this painting I hope you haven't fallen asleep or anything um, this is the way I work though I work from light to dark and that's kind of the traditional transparent method but not only that but I'm looking at those edges really carefully I've got some uh, some hard edges and some soft edges it's usually uh, edges are usually softer where the values are similar and where the values are very contrasty that's usually where we see the detail and uh, that in the in the painting and so this whole process that we've taken as we look towards this painting look at the areas of light and dark. Some areas are very distinct, some areas are very, very soft. And that's what we see in nature uh, as, we, as we look around. We're going to see these lights, but we're not going to see hard edges all the time. And so with this particular painting then, I've carefully planned these lights and darks from the beginning as you see here in the value study, and I'm carrying those through. Well, thanks very much for joining me for this painting. I've had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you've had some fun watching it. This is just my techniques that I use. There's a lot of other different techniques as well. But I just want to show you how I do it, which is working from the, the more uh, loose uh, glazes and adding over with the darker glazes and refining the detail as you go, using a lot of negative painting and trying to pay attention to those darks and lights. As we look back here to the photograph that we started with, uh, it looks a lot duller in, in uh, value than this does. There's more power here and it's, it has more strength, the colors are better, and that's the way we should, should make every, every time we work from a photograph or reference material that we've shot out on location. We should plan it, we should do a value study that helps us define those shapes of lights and darks and be able to work through that in our painting itself so we come up with what we wanted and what we saw when we were there, not some photograph that uh, doesn't have any, any power to it at all. Let's don't replicate the photographs. They need some help. And so thanks for joining us. I hope you'll join us again. This is Roland Lee.